Hi, welcome to this demo of deploying Spectrum Protect Plus to do container backup support. In this demo, I'll be installing into a Kubernetes environment, but I will point out just the small differences of what it would take to install into an OpenShift environment. And this would be for a disconnected setup. The Kubernetes environment itself does not access the packages directly. Instead, we're going to download those packages onto an intermediate server and then have your Kubernetes environment pull them from there. So this will be deployed with a command line. And what you're going to find is that we do use Helm charts in order to do this Kubernetes install. And so because we're doing it in this disconnected environment, we're going to download these packages from Passport Advantage onto this inter intermediate server that has internet connection. This intermediate download server then moves the packages to the management server, and then we will do an unpack and install on the management server. And so what this means is that the management server does not have to have any internet access out to the installation packages. I do have some other demos utilizing a connected environment where we would be utilizing Helm 3 Re in order to pull the containers with the Spectrum Protect Plus backup support down. Okay, so the steps I'm going to go through for doing this installation of the Spectrum Protect container backup support inside of Kubernetes with the command line for the disconnected environment is first of all, we're going to make sure we have our prerequisites installed, and this is going to be Helm 3 and Valero 142 or 151. For Helm 3, when you installed it, you might have to rename the binary to Helm 3 so it can coexist with the Helm 2 installation. And this is documented in the Spectrum Protect Plus documentation. And during the Valero install, make sure you note down the namespace. For Spectrum Protect Plus, the default is SPP-Valero. We're then going to download those packages from the Passport Advantage and unpack them. Then we're going to unpack the Helm package that's part of the downloaded packages. We're going to change into the installation directory, and then we're going to edit two of these files. And these files are the important pieces that have got to be updated. So we'll take a look at those. Finally, we'll run a BAS install and then finish up by checking that the install is completed successfully. If you were doing an install into an OpenShift environment, the steps would be identical with the exception that when you fill out the forms, you'll be issuing some different commands to find out the values. And when you check the results, you will see some different pods up and running. You will definitely want to be referring to the Spectrum Protect Plus documentation. There is a whole chapter on installing the container backup support, and it will walk you through these different options that we're going to be talking about. Do not get this confused with installing a Spectrum Protect Plus server into a container. This is just installing the container backup support to backup those containers to a off-site Spectrum Protect Plus server. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started. From this Kubernetes machine, we have pulled down the package from Passport Advantage. It's the same package for a Kubernetes or OpenShift install. Your package might have a slightly different name. First thing we're going to do is we're going to expand it by issuing a tar-xvf against this installer package. And you'll see that the package has two components inside of it. The first is going to be a gzipped tar of all of our Spectrum Protect Plus images for protecting container environments. And then the second is going to be a Helm package. First, change directory into the installer directory. Next, you'll want to unpackage the Helm package using the tar-xvf. After that unzips and expands, if you issue another dir, you'll see the new directory. And if you drill down into that Spectrum Protect Plus product directory and keep going further into the IBM Cloud underscore pack and the pack extensions, finally into the install directory. 
Next, we're going to issue a chmod against the .sh files to make them executable. And then we're going to actually go in and edit the bass.options.sh, which has the options we need for configuring the prereqs. And then you'll go in and edit the bass.value.yaml, which has the options needed to do the configure for the install and upgrades. So in both of these files, you'll find hints and tips on how to find the answers for the options you need to enter. Um, this is also documented in the Spectrum Protect Plus documentation. Notice there's a set of commands for Kubernetes environments and a set of commands for OpenShift. So depending upon where you're doing installation, you'll use that specific command to help you figure out what options to put into these files. So for instance, if you go into the bass.options and you see this cluster API server IPS, and if we give the command to execute to find that value, You'll see that we use this 9.11.70.156 because we only have one machine needed. And that's the Kubernetes host IP. And then the other two entries, we would simply delete them off. So another key that's critical is the cluster underscore cider key. And if you read the hints and tips in the file, it says to issue this cube control cluster dash info dump and then grep on the cluster dash cider. And so if we go ahead and do that, then we'll get the value and we'll put that in as the cluster cider option where currently it says 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. If we issue a more against the bass options dot sh, which we have already filled out, you'll see the four bits needed for Docker. So the address, the namespace, the username, and the password. And then you'll see the Spectrum Protect Plus server credentials, and you'll see the data mover min IO username and password. And, and for these data mover min IO, you can basically make up the name and the password, um, and those will be utilized then later. You'll also see any PVCs that need to be protected that are not in the BAS namespace. And those will be listed here separated by a space because an image pull secret has to be created for each of those additional namespaces. So this will be done in the install for the namespaces you have listed here. And that's done by taking those namespaces and feeding them into BAS prereqs create BAS registry dash secrets. So we're taking those namespaces, feeding them in, and creating secrets for those. If you were to add additional namespaces after the install, then you could go through and just manually run this process here in this script. Okay, so we filled out the bassoptions.sh file and the bass-values YAML file. So now we're going to run a pre-checker and then we're gonna actually run the install script, which will go out and create a namespace called bass, create an image pull secret so that you have um, access registry, and then create the credential secrets, which is gonna hold the username and passwords, and then do the Helm install. So notice we have two install files. One is your bass install dash PPA, which is our passport advantage one that we're using for this air gapped install. Or you have the bass install dash entitled registry, which would be used if your Kubernetes machine had direct access out to the Helm packages. So we're gonna go ahead and run the bass install dash PPA sh and this is going to call underneath the covers a bass prereq dash air gap dot sh so the air gap ppa has bass values that point to an entitled registry versus the ppa which points to some other registry but not the entitled registry so when we run the bass air gap dot sh it's going to call files which do loads and saves. Now remember, we already saved the files off of Passport Advantage. So these files are going to take that tar-gz that we downloaded, and it is going to load the images in 
to the local Docker environment and then tag those images and push them to the registry specified in the bas-options.sh file. The prereq scripts will be run as part of the install script, but you can also run them alone. So if we run this bas prereqs checker, it'll go through and check all the different items. In fact, you can see here that it's complaining that we don't have a minimum version of 1.17 for Kubernetes. So we've got to go out and fix that before we can continue. Okay, so we fixed our Kubernetes level and we're ready to run bas install ppa.sh. And this will also run underneath the covers, the prereq checker. Then it'll do a Docker load of the images out of the tar.gz, which we originally downloaded and then untarred at the beginning of this video. And it's gonna put those into a directory structure that's outlined by the IBM certification process of so that directory structure looks a little long, you know that that's just part of our certification process. And this will take about three minutes to do the loads. It's also doing the tagging and the pushing, and it's setting up the images in our Docker registry. So it's creating that BAS namespace, it's creating the image pull secrets, the credential pull secrets, and then it's gonna do that Helm install. So also notice that it tells you some of the commands you can use, for instance, this Helm3 list command, which will show if this package has been correctly deployed. So you'll see here that IBM Spectrum Protect product has been deployed. We'll also issue a kube control get all space dash n space bass, and we will see that all of the pods have been deployed and are running. Do note that if you were installing into an OpenShift environment, these pods would look slightly different, and you can refer back to the documentation to see which one should be running. So at this point, you could just go to your Spectrum Protect Plus server, and wherever you install that, you could access the user interface, and then go through and set up the Kubernetes or OpenShift clusters inside of Spectrum Protect Plus so that they can be protected and I do have another video on that. So in summary, I've shown you how to deploy the Spectrum Protect Plus container backup support into a Kubernetes or OpenShift environment using the command line in a disconnected air-gapped type of environment. Thank you very much.